Welcome, viewers, to our uh, attempt at trying to teach people how to play Full Thrust Light. We're in the middle of quarantine here in Houston, Texas, and I guess we want to see if we can bring some joy into other people's lives on teaching them how to play Full Thrust. We're in the, we have the perfect opportunity to learn how because Julie doesn't know how to play, right? That's correct. So I don't. We're going to see if we can uh, remedy that solution. Uh, remedy that problem not the solution the problem <laughs> uh, so to begin where do you get full thrust light from uh, ground zero games with the people that wrote the full thrust uh, rules set and they uh, also wrote full thrust light which is a super streamed down version of full thrust that you can learn in a in like 30 minutes maybe uh, and you can use why I like full thrust, you know, I'm a huge 3D printer guy. So most of the models that you'll ever see on our table are 3D printed. For instance, this Centauri Primus Cruiser and that Sovereign class uh, ship from Star, uh, Star Trek, the stands, the dice uh, towers that we use is all 3D printed stuff. Uh, it's th uh, 3D, finding 3D files for all these things. If you have your own printer, if you have access to a printer, it's super easy. Uh, and we've scaled everything we use so that if you had Star Wars Armada figures, you could put them on the same table and they would look appropriate with each other. Um, that leads to some weird scaling issues, but that's, I think, a story for a different uh, broadcast. So if you go to the Ground Zero Games website, uh, gzg.com, uh, you can go to the rules and you can download Full Thrust Lite and you can follow along. Um, one thing, while Ground Zero Games does sell a line of fantastic miniatures for Full Thrust, uh, their rule set is uh, miniatures agnostic so that you can use anything. You can use your own cardboard cutouts, which in the Full Thrust Lite rules, they have little things that you can photocopy and uh, use as your units. You can use the Ground Zero Games units, which again are very nice. They're at a different scale. They're slightly smaller than what we've played at our table, which is we don't, why we don't normally use them. But you can use anything. Um, Full Thrust has their own rule set that covers most things. And then there's a community created rule set called Full Thrust Continuum, where you can basically uh, design your ships to be like they're from whatever universe you're trying to design them from. So you could have phasers with your Star Trek ships or uh, pulsed weapons from, pulsed laser weapons from Babylon 5, or you could have like kinetic guns that you'd see in, from the rail guns in the Expanse or Battlestar Galactica. Uh, so it's pretty varied. Um, for those of you who know what this is, the movement that Full Thrust Light uses is cinematic movement. So think of how starships move in Star Wars or Star Trek. In the regular uh, Full Thrust rules, uh, the standard rules, uh, there's also another kind of movement that's meant to simulate what you would see in The Expanse or in Babylon 5 called vectored movement, um, where some ships, like especially if you're familiar with Babylon 5, the way that a white star moves or the way like a star fury moves on the tabletop would be considered vector movement where like an Omega class destroyer from uh, Babylon 5 would be cinematic movement. That's a fun little thing. So if you have your full thrust light rule set, and this is the black and white one, which you obviously can't see from the screen, but uh, this is what we're gonna be referencing. We've briefly gone over the rules a little bit, but we're gonna talk about the three phases of uh, full thrust light uh, a game turn. So there's first, is order plotting, uh, ship movement, and then ship weapons fire. Order plotting, the way, that full th the way that full thrust works, whether you're playing the light version, or the full version, or continuum, you always write down what your ship is gonna do, because that way you can calculate, using your thrust value that your ships have, uh, what your course change and your velocity change are gonna be. In the full thrust universe, an object of motion tends to stay at motion unless it's acted on something else. So if I set my ship going six movement units, 
and then don't change that next turn, it's still going to go six. Uh, unless I uh, manually apply thrust to slow down or speed up. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Are you going to explain more about cinematic movement? Um, we will get into let's so let's talk about turning. So, if you look at your SSDs, your ship system display, uh, on the full thrust light pre-generated uh, ships, each one has a thrust value equal to the number of uh, engine thrust points it has. So today we're going to be starting with the battle cruiser as our first game, and the battle cruiser has a total thrust of six. So the way that the rules are written. For full, for full thrust light is that you can use up to your maximum thrust points for velocity changes, either accelerating or decelerating, or half of your thrust points to change your course. Um, we use, uh, if you look at the bases that are provided by um, RFX Designs, uh, which is a local uh, guy who does 3D modeling here, um, we have little bases that uh, make uh, movement easy. You can buy the plans for these online. You can buy the actual physical ones online. We print them on our printer and we, we have a license to sell them. Um, but you, these aren't required for full thrust. You can always buy, you can use the uh, paper um, arc uh, template that's in the full thrust light rules or the full thrust rules. Lots of people make acrylic templates that make uh, plotting movement easier, but these RFX design ones uh, work really well for what we use. So, about uh, changing a course. So, in the, when you're when you're plotting your movement, if if you look at the uh, SSD, uh, the movement plotter has an example of how changing uh, your course changes how you're facing. This is the edge of my table, so that means this is twelve o'clock for me. That's the edge of uh, Julie's side, so uh, that's her 12 o'clock. So if I want to change my course, I can spend up to half of my points to go port or starboard. If you have a hard time remembering that, remember that port and left have the same number of letters in them. And that's, uh, your port is left. Um, so, uh, when you are trying to turn, if you want to turn one, so say, for instance, uh, we look at turn one on the example sheet here. It says that the player put plus two into his velocity, making his velocity eight, but didn't change his course. So what that looks like is, if my course doesn't change, I just put my little tape measure here and I move a total of eight, all right? So that's no course change, that's just moving in the direction that I started in at the velocity that I wrote down. If I wanted to change that, to where instead of going 12 o'clock, I was going uh, 11 o'clock. Since there's only one point of course change, I would move my guy to 11, and then I would go eight, All right? Now to make it complicated, if you have more than one point in course change, you then have to break up your, uh, your turn. So if I wanna go, instead of 11, say I wanna put two points in and I wanna go uh, to the 10 o'clock. So what I have to do is divide my uh, velocity in half and make the course change uh, in two bits. So first of all, I'll turn 11 and I'll go four because that's half of the velocity that I had. And once I get there, I'll turn to 10 and I'll go four more. We spent a little bit of time with that uh, before the stream trying to explain that. And that's, it kind of gets complicated because if, you're, if you have an odd number, for instance, turning three, you round down for your first turn. So you would make a course change to 11 o'clock uh, for the first one. And then you would uh, make the second course change uh, to nine o'clock. So that, uh, that takes up the three points in, that you put into course change. And this is all covered in the rules. Um, again, the rule set for Full Thrust Light is actually really short. I mean, the whole set of rules for Full Thrust Light in the black and white version on the Ground Zero Games website is on two whole pages. I like the color one, because um, the color one looks nicer, but the black and white one is just two sheets of rules. It's fantastic. 
All right, so I think we're going to start our first game, and then we'll get into uh, the phases and um, shooting and stuff like that. Um, we also use another item that was provided by uh, RFX Design. Uh, we have a little quick, quick reference sheet that covers our beams, our pulse torpedoes, and how you calculate movement. Uh, and there's actually a ton of quick references out there. So, uh, a little card. Yeah, she has a color one that was just fantastically designed. The guy who designed all that stuff has a degree in like graphics design or three-dimensional design or something like that. It's all good. Can't say enough good things about, uh, about uh, RFX design. Um, all right, so uh, both of our units have arrived on our things. So Julie, go ahead and put your ship within six inches of the table edge. Okay. I'm going to set my ship right at the six inch mark. And the measurements that you do are uh, generally from the center of your model. Uh, so we use uh, uh, the approximate center of our flight stands that we have. So the first order, uh, the first uh, part of the turn is the order plotting phase. So if you look at your sheet, you have your starting velocity and course, which is what you arrived to the battle with. And you can set your starting velocity up to your maximum thrust points. So we're using the battle cruiser, so that means our maximum thrust points is six. So at that, uh, that means that we can start with the starting velocity of six. Uh, if you want, you can do slower. We have a player, if you watch some of our other videos, we have a player uh, who consistently goes a lot slower than everyone else and it generally goes to his advantage. So now that we've determined our starting, uh, we want to plot our first turn. So I am kind of aggressive uh, with this. So uh, for my first turn, and normally you keep this secret so that the other person can't uh, like hear what you're doing and then uh, anticipate where you're gonna be. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna talk a lot. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, I wanna go fast. So I'm not gonna change my course at all, but I am gonna add all six of my uh, turn one uh, thrust points into velocity. So my starting, uh, my velocity in the first turn will be 12. Cause I started at six and then I added six. Julie, what are you gonna do? Uh, my starting velocity, I left with six, my full map, but I didn't add any. I stayed at six and I'm continuing to go straight, so 12. All right, so that's the order plotting phase. After the order and plotting phase, we both at the same time do our movement. So I'm gonna grab my thing. Our movement units are 12 inches, but your movement units uh, can be determined by whatever play surface you have. You can do inches, centimeters, millimeters. If you have access to like a huge gymnasium, you can do meters. But in this case, we're using inches. So I'm gonna move 12 inches right there. Now, these ships that we're using are equipped with pulse torpedoes that which have a maximum range of 30 and beams which have a maximum range from a beam three of 36. So I'm gonna see, have you moved? Beautiful. I'm gonna see if I'm in range and we are just barely in beam three range of each other. So that, uh, with the end of the movement phase, that leads us nicely into the fire phase. So the fire phase is, uh, started with a determination of initiative where both Julie and I are gonna roll a six-sided dice and see if uh, whoever gets the highest roll gets to fire first. So Julie, I rolled a six. I'm gonna roll that again because it didn't sound like it rolled. Three, and you got a four. All right, so Julie, mm -hmm. you're, uh, you could fire first. Now, looking at our quick reference, up to 36 inches, beam three can reach with one dice. Um, your, the number of dice that you can have for a beam weapon is determined by its class. So a beam four can fire uh, further than that or have more dice at that range. But we'll get over that, we'll get into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Julie, you have two beam threes. Okay, so I can roll two dice? Yes, uh, you're at your maximum range, but you can fire both of those beam threes at me if you want. Mm -hmm. 
Beams for full thrust light uh, hit uh, and do one damage at a four or greater. And if you roll a six, uh, you do double damage and you re-roll to see if there's an additional bit of damage. Go ahead and roll two dice, Julie. So what did you get? I got a one and a five. All right, so that five hit for one damage on my battle cruiser. All right. Do you have anything else in range? No. Mm -hmm. uh, in six more inches, you'll have uh, you'll be able to start firing pulse torpedoes too. Um, all right, so that's the end of your combat turn. I will do basically the exact same thing because we're at the same range. So I'm going to fire two beam threes uh, at range 36. I got one double, so that's two. I got a total of three hits. So go ahead and mark off three boxes on your battle cruiser's SSD. Beautiful. All right. Julie has fired. I have fired. So that's the end of turn one. Mm -hmm. So turn two, we start over with the order plotting phase where uh, you both plot your movement. So I'm going to get sneaky. All right, so I have plotted my movement where I am going to turn starboard free and I'm going to speed up as well. And then Julie is plotting her movement. Julie, what do you want to uh, achieve this turn in moving? So I'm going to slow down too. Ooh. So I will be at velocity four. And my course was at 12, but I'm going to go port 1, so I'll be at 11. Oh, interesting. See, that's, I meant to try and get on the one side of her so she can only fire one pulse torpedo, and it looks like I'm not going to achieve that. <laughs> All right, so once our uh, movement is plotted, then we, uh, act, or then we execute on it. So I'm going to get up. And this happens at the same time, so uh, this is a two-point turn, and since it's an odd number, I have to round down. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn from 12 to 1 and go my half of my movement, which is 7 and a half inches. Okay, it's right there. And then I'm going to turn two. And in the rules, you have to be careful because if you go off of the board, uh, you're basically out of the game. Unless you both, uh, unless all your players agree to. I think that's about right. So this game is probably going to be pretty short. <laughs> because I'm probably not going to be able to recover from that. Yeah, I think that was a not a good choice, but we'll see how it plays. All right, have you moved? I did. You turned? Looks like it, yep. Alrighty, so now we're gonna roll for initiative to see who fires first. I got a six. I got a six. Reroll. I got a three. Three. All right, reroll. Five. Two. Alrighty, I'm going first. So we have a range of, it looks like 27. All right, so this is, uh, we get to talk about arcs now. So our beam threes have arcs where they face uh, the four and then port four and port aft. Um, and then my beam two, which we're not in range of, uh, can hit everything, but 
So I am right at the cusp of my one pulse torpedo. So we're at range. I need to roll a six or higher to hit. So I'm gonna fire my one pulse torpedo that's in arc. And I roll the six. So now I get to roll for damage. Pulse torpedoes roll two hit and then roll four damage. I got four damage. So go ahead and mark four. All right, did you reach the end or do you have one more box? I reached the end. All right, so uh, according to the rules, when da uh, damage points inflicted are applied to the target ship immediately and are recorded by crossing out small square hole boxes on the ship's SSD, starting at the top row and working from left to right. One box per damage point. When the accumulated damage reaches or passes the end of one whole box row, then a threshold check for critical systems damage is performed as soon as all fire from that particular attacking ship uh, against the target ship is completed. I'm not done firing yet because I think I can hit you with my beam three at 27. It's still only one dice. So we're looking for a four or greater to hit. I missed. Okay. Oh, okay, good. So now, okay. <laughs> Julie, you have to do a threshold check. Okay. So the way that we do threshold checks is to kind of to streamline things. We break our weapons into the specific weapon systems. So you have two pulse torpedoes, you have five beam weapons, mm -hmm. you have three fire controls, which fire controls are denoted by a box with a small colored in circle uh, on your SSD. And those allow you to, the number of fire control systems that you have, are the number of separate targets that you can target. All right, so, and then you have two engine systems. So with threshold checks, you're, uh, a failure is uh, on the first row of threshold check is one. And then when you get to your second row, it's uh, once you fill in your second row of damage uh, on your whole boxes, you have to roll, a, you have to defeat a two or lower. So today, Julie, or right now, Julie's going to roll ones for her two pulse torpedoes to see if either one of them get knocked out. Okay, so I'm trying to get over a one. Yes. Over my dice so I don't die. Yeah. Okay. Oh, shoot. All right. I got one one and one six. <laughs> so you have to cross off one of your pulse torpedoes. That pulse torpedo is no longer effective in this game. So you have to choose which one to use. Or to, to lose. Now, in regular full thrust, there is a uh, mechanism for repairing um, systems on your ship. But in full thrust light, there is not. Okay. All right. Now, roll five dice for your five beam weapons. And again, you're trying to avoid a one. So you have two, you have two beam threes, you have one beam two, and you have two beam ones. So it's a total of five dice. Get any ones? No ones. All right. Woo Roll for your three fire controls. Three fire controls. Okay. Uh, uh oh. Five. No, just three dice. Just three dice. Yeah. Okay, no ones. And then roll for your two engines. Two engines. No ones. All righty. So you just, you just lost the pulse torpedo. Okay. That's good. All right. So that's the end of my combat. So, Julie, it's your turn to shoot at me. Okay. We're at 27 inches. So, I can use my beam three or pulse torpedo, same as Brian did. Or both. Or both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Roll your pulse. Uh, do you want to fire with your pulse torpedo? Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, fire your pulse torpedo first. So, you're rolling to hit and you're trying to get a six. So, I can use one dice. Yes. <laughs> awesome. All right, go ahead and roll for damage. Okay, roll for damage on that one. Just a one dice, right? Yeah, it's one dice, and the dice face is the amount of damage I take. Four. All right. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. All right. Now you're in range. You're you have beam three range, and since you didn't make a weird course change, both of your beam threes are in arc, firing arc. So you can roll two dice. For the beam threes at range three. Okay. What did you get? One and a two. All right. So those both miss because you're looking for four or greater on your beam dice. Yes. All right. And that is the end of turn two. Okay. All right. So on to turn three, we're going to do order plotting.
and then movement, and then fire again. I have already plotted. I'm going to see if I can save it or if we're going to have to fudge it uh, here. Uh, I'm applying negative three to my velocity and my maximum uh, three points since I have a total of six thrust uh, into turning to port to see if I can not go off the table. I don't think it's going to happen, so I think we're going to have to fudge it. Say that again. All right. So <laughs> I don't think I can make the turn correctly. Okay. Uh, and I would go off the table, and that would end the game normally. Mm -hmm. But since this is a uh, tutorial game, mm -hmm. where I might have to fudge it to see if I can get okay. back on the table. I get it. All right. So go ahead and plot what you want to do. Uh, keep in mind that I am probably going to end up like right here, mm -hmm. pointing that way. Mm -hmm. So half of my uh, arc is not going to be uh, able to shoot you. Normally, you wouldn't know what someone's going to do, but on this specific occasion, we're, we're going to make it easy. So you can slow down or speed up. You can turn. And tell me what you did after. Okay. What do you got? I'm staying the same. You're going to stay the same? Velocity is still 4, and course is still 11. All right. Well, since the order is plotted, we're going to see... Where we would end up. So I immediately am going to turn one, so facing two, and I'm going to go six inches. Oh my gosh. So you couldn't slow down more? Uh, no, because you mm -hmm. have a, I have a total thrust of six, mm -hmm. and I have to turn the maximum turn. So now I can turn. Oh, I think I'm just barely going to make it. Yeah, I'm just oh, barely, oh, barely going to make it. see how close we've gotten to each other. From base to base, we are now 15, yeah, 15 uh, inches from each other. All right, so, okay. <laughs> Just making sure. You were fine. Straight. <laughs> Let's roll for initiative for fire phase. Okay. Now that the movement phase is done. I got a five. I also did. Stop that. <laughs> Go ahead and roll again. I got a two. Five. All right. It's your turn. We're at range 15. That means your beam ones are in range. Your beam three, or your, excuse me, your beam twos are in range. Mm -hmm. uh, and your beam threes can roll two dice each. Uh, and then yeah. if you fire your pulse torpedo, which, which one did you knock out? Okay, good. You knocked out the right one. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, your pulse torpedo requires a four or greater to hit. So I would start with your pulse torpedo. Yeah. Ah. What'd you roll? I rolled a one. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. So if you want to fire with both of your beam threes and your beam two, that would be a total of five dice. They're both within an arc. Okay. They're definitely, well, I let's see here. So your forward arc is these three. So I'm gonna say, yeah, that's that's within arc. So it's both of them. Yeah. Okay. If it was one degree over, mm -hmm. or one clock face over, uh, that would not be it. So. So you have two beam threes. Two beam threes. That each roll two dice, because we're at so medium we'll range. Do that first. And then you also have one beam two, which you can roll at the same time. Unless you. All right. So could you beam threes first? All right, perfect. What do you got? All right, I got one, two, two fours, and a six. So, so it's three. four damage and a reroll. One, two. Go ahead and reroll. All of them? Just the one. Just the, Just the oh, six okay. that you got. Mm -hmm. And a five. And a five. Wow, that hurt. Three, four, five. Okay, now roll your beam two. Beam two is just going to be one dice. Correct. Three. All right. It missed. Now, that put me at the end of my first threshold check, so I have to see if I lose any of my systems. 
I'm gonna roll my two pulse torpedoes, and I'm trying not to get a one. I got a three and a six, so those are fine. Beam threes, beam one, beam two, and uh, I haven't lost anything. Fire controls. Nothing. And engines. Nothing. Thank goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, now it's my turn. If you're done firing, uh, it's my turn to shoot. So I only have my port arcs available to fire at Julie's uh, starship. So I'm going to fire my port pulse torpedo, which is at a four to hit. And I got a five, so I'm going to roll for damage. I do four damage from the pulse torpedo. So one, two, three, four. And then I have a total of three dice that's in range um, to hit you with beams. That's one beam three and one beam two. And I got one uh, point of damage from that. I rolled a four. Okay. That's the end of my turn. Do you have to do damage threshold? Nope. All right. Okay. So that ends the uh, uh, turn. So we're going to move to turn four. And so let's plot movement. All right, so I kind of want to get close to her, but not too close. So I have slowed down from 12 velocity to 6 velocity. And since I don't have anything left over for any course changes, my course is going to remain at 12 o'clock. What do you got? Okay. So I am going to turn port 1, so my course is not going to be... Nine, but I'm staying at the same velocity because I don't want to get too close to the edge. Alrighty. So let's do that. Mine's pretty simple. It's just a matter of finding six inches of movement. And there we go. Yep, if you're only turning one, you uh, make the turn first. Oh, have you gone too far? Oh, no. I meant to say I was going course 10. Okay. That's what I meant. Just said it wrong. Oh, my gosh. You are just staring at me. <laughs> this is going to hurt a lot. Uh, I think it's very important now, whoever goes first, we're at seven and a half inches, so we're in range of everything. All right, let's roll for initiative for to start the fire phase. Grab a dice, Julie, and I rolled a one. I also rolled a one. <laughs> All right, I rolled a two. Six. All right, you go first. All right. So at seven inches... Um, the only thing that is not at its closest range is pulse torpedoes. You can fire one pulse torpedo at me and you're looking for a three or greater to hit. Okay, three or greater. Oh my gosh, that's a two. <laughs> All right, that's good, that's good. It's good for me anyway. All right, and now you, both of your beam, everything's an arc. Mm -hmm. So that means you have two beam, two, uh, two beam ones. So that's two dice. Two dice. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have one beam two, which is two dice. Yes. And you have two beam threes two for a total of six more dice. Oh, yeah. Six. Yeah. All right. Roll all of those dice. All right. How many hits do you have? So they had to be over four, right? Yes. Four or greater? I have one, two, three. Is, I, is, I got two sixes. You got two sixes. So you need to re roll, or you need to re roll two more dice. So that's five hits so far. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got five and a two. So that's six hits total. Six hits total to bring in. 
One, two, three, four, and that is my second threshold check. All right, so now if I hit a two or lower, I start losing systems. So I'm gonna roll for my pulse torpedoes, nothing. I'm gonna roll for my five beam weapons. I have lost nothing. Uh, I'm rolling for my three fire controls, uh, nothing, and my two engines, nothing. Wow, those, I wish those were hit dice. All right, so that's the end of your turn, and it's my turn. So you have one pulse torpedo at range th uh, or dice three, which I miss. Fantastic, I'm glad to be here. But I have three beams, or three dice of beam three, two dice of beam two, uh, and two dice of beam one. Because one of my beam threes is in an arc, uh, and my pulse torpedo is in an arc, I can't fire with those. So you're getting less dice than you just gave me. Mm -hmm. All right, so I got a six, a four, and that's it. So that's three so far, and rerolling the six is another four. So you take a total of four damage. Okay, so I start, I continue this line and I go to the next one? Yes. Three, four, okay. All right, so you're in the same position I was where you need to roll for your second threshold check, so a two or lower will knock out your systems. So roll for your pulse, pulse, remaining pulse torpedo next. Pulse torpedo, just the one. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. What'd you get? I got five. All right, now roll for your remaining beams. Mm, that would be... Five dice. Five. And remember, a two or lower knocks out a system. Or knocks out a specific thing. All right, so you get to choose which beams get knocked out. Any of them, right? Uh-huh. Shoot, okay, now. Fire controls, go ahead and roll your three fire controls. All right. They're all over two. And your engines. And the two engines. The engines are a big deal. Uh, maybe not right now. Uh, I got one too. You lost an engine. I lost an engine. All right. So that means your total thrust from now on Scoop. is a maximum of three. That means the maximum turn that you can do is one turn. It doesn't matter which side though. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't like, yeah. You won't like only be able to turn left if you lose your right engine. Alrighty, so go ahead and plot your turn five movement now that we've ended turn four. Thinking about how to affect the battle the next turn. Because the next turn, it may not be the last, but it's going to get really dicey because everything will be in range of everything. I guess we were that already this turn, but more so next turn. Hmm. All right, pencils down. Okay, so we're done with the order plotting phase for turn five. Now we have to execute our movement. I have, I'm applying, uh, I'm decelerating three to bring my velocity down to three. And I'm also turning to port or left three to bring my clock phase to nine to attempt to get both of my uh, uh, modified firing arcs or uh, my limited firing arcs to bear on Julie's ship. Julie, what are you doing? I am also turning port one, so I'll be course nine. But I'm slowing down two, so just velocity two. All right, so since you're only turning one, you just click and move. Since I'm turning three, I click, I move, I click, move a little, and I click and move the rest. I probably shouldn't have turned that much, but maybe it is. Maybe that's good. All right, so I'm clicking to 11. And turning and moving 1.5 inches. 
and clicking to nine. Now in full thrust light rules, there is no collisions or ramming. So being in this close proximity doesn't really matter, except for the physical board. But in regular full thrust, you can collide with another ship. Basically what the full thrust light rules say is you need to make an accommodation for the physical models to be as close to uh, correct as possible. And if it requires moving the model, you should both the players that involve that should agree on that. Okay, so... Did you do your turn? You did. I turned, but now I'm going to be like right on top of you. All right. At two. So just, I'm going to move over a little bit and you set yourself right here. Or right where it's appropriate. Okay. okay. Well, I guess I didn't achieve exactly what I wanted because I went a little too extreme. So now I'm the exact opposite of what I was last time. But I'm now on the side where you have lost your pulse torpedo and your beam three and your beam one. I guess you've lost both your B1s. So the only thing that you can hit me with is your beam two. Is that, are you in, are you in, in, in the center arc? Yeah. Cause you're technically kind of over more in front of me. Well, look at this. Cause you had to move that over a little. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Maybe we're not close enough. Maybe we're supposed to be that close. Yeah, I guess we're, well, I guess it doesn't matter then. All right, well, let's roll for initiative and see who gets to smack each other first. I got a one. Five. All right, you're going first. Okay. So I can use my beam two. And your beam three. And my beam three. So that's five dice. No pulse, though. Well, if your beam three is an arc, then your pulse oh, is an arc. Pulse two, yeah. yeah. And you're close enough that it's a two. You have to hit at least a two to get the... Pulse torpedo. Okay, pulse torpedo is two. Three. All right. Okay, I got three. So you got to roll for damage now. Okay. You got a hit, so now you got to roll for damage on the pulse torpedo. Three. All right. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, now we do two and three. So a total of five dice. Five dice. Because we're just way too close. One, two, three. But one of those is a six. Yes, and there is a six. So you have so that's a total of five damage plus a reroll. Five. Six damage. Six damage. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I have one whole point left, so I'm still alive, but I have to do a threshold check of three. Let's see if I still have any weapons to hit you with after this. Uh, so a three or lower loses stuff. I just rolled for my pulse torpedoes and lost both of my pulse torpedoes because I rolled two twos. Um, and then I'm going to roll for my five beam weapons. And I lose one beam weapon. Um, yep. And roll for my fire controls. Fire controls determine how many targets you get target. So if I lose all three of my fire controls, I can't shoot anymore even though I have active weapons. I lost one fire control and now engines. I lost one engine. That means I have to modify my turn six order because I don't have as many engines as I thought. All right, well, with one whole point left, I'm going to see if I can destroy my wife. <laughs> so we are in spinning distance. So that's three dice for beam three, three dice for beam three, two dice for beam one, and I only have one, or two dice for beam two, and I only have one beam one left. All right, so I have two, four, five, six, with two re-rolls. Seven, seven damage. Seven damage. How close? How close are you to dying? You have three I points have three left. Boxes left, but I reached a threshold. Also. Yes, and so you're in the same position as I was, where a three or lower is going to knock out your systems. Three or lower. Okay. So roll your pulse torpedo. Pulse torpedo just <laughs> And you Come lost on. it. All right. Shoot. Roll your two remaining beam weapons. Your only two remaining beam weapons. Okay, they're good. 
Okay, roll your fire controls. Fire controls is three. Yep. They are three or lower, you said? Yep. Oh, I have two threes. All right, well, I mean, it doesn't matter when there's only one ship that you're targeting anyway, but you lost two fire controls. So in a game with multiple ships, you would only be able to shoot at one, but you still, in this game, you could still shoot at one, and that's still deadly enough for me. Okay. Now roll for your other engine. All right. Good. All righty. Okay. All right. So that is the end of turn five. So plot your turn six movement. It's pretty simple. Pretty pretty simple because you know what are you going to change with your three points of thrust? Nothing. All right. All right. Well. If that's go ahead and plot your movement. If that's the end of your move uh, plotting phase, we'll move on to movement. I think the order plotting phase on any full thrust game ends up being the longest phase, and it's also the one with least action. But it's important to think about what you're doing so that you can make the right movements, not almost end up at the table. I Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Sorry. Um, how many can I turn at one time? Um, up to half rounded down because the first thing is rounded down. So you can turn one oh. point. That's all. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Because half of what I can actually do. Yes. Okay. Dang. You okay, Jazz? You want to come here? Come on. Come on. Yep, you can do it. Come on. Come on. Give me your hand. Come on. Up. Up. All right, come here. I got you. Oh. Okay. All right, so movement phase, now that order plotting is done. I'm gonna move three inches just this way. Wait, three or six? No, nope, six inches. Because I applied plus three to my velocity, but didn't change course. So right there, six inches. All right, Julie, go ahead. Now this puts us in a dangerous position because where you currently are, are uh, almost entirely in my aft arc and in the full thrust light rules. And unless you change it as a house rule, you can't fire out of your aft. So go ahead and you do your change. Okay, so um, Looks like you starboard one. Starboard one, so to the right one. And I slowed down one, so I'm just velocity one. Oh wow, okay, so you are almost entirely out of my reach. Okay. And then one inch is like, yeah. I guess we'll just move a little. All right, let's see here. Let's see here. Can I argue that you are port or starboard? Nope, you are entirely behind me. <laughs> so you can fire at me. With my two beam. With your two beam. But I can't fire at you. So at two beams, at this close, you're rolling two dice. I only have one whole point left. So if you hit me once, the game is over and you win. Okay. So go ahead and roll your dice. Oh, okay. let's do initiative. Well, initiative doesn't matter because I can't fire at you. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and... So my two beam, I am within. So I roll two dice. Yep. So Looking for fours or greater. I got a four and a five. All right, well, that is my last toll point, mm -hmm. and that is the end of my bath cruiser. Nice. Thank you for watching. Uh, we were super excited to do this. Uh, I like teaching people, especially my wife, on how to play my favorite video games. Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them below. Um, follow us on Twitch and YouTube. 
uh, it's twitch uh, twitch.tv slash pulsifer or youtube uh, at youtube.com slash kazin14 k-a-z-i-n-1-4 also follow us on twitch I am bpulsifer on twitch or on uh, twitter follow us on twitter do you have a twitter? no alright <laughs> well thank you for watching and have a good day thanks have fun